There is an old adage in the British Army called the seven Ps. Proper preparation and planning prevents something poor performance. I'll leave you to work out what the missing P is. Now, as an accountant, business advisor, and author, I've seen firsthand how cloud accounting, one of the things that I think all businesses should embrace, can transform the way that your business can manage their finances. Now, if you're considering reaching for the switch, you're on the right path to be more efficient and effective in managing your finances and understanding what the present and the future holds for you. Now, in this week's video, I'm gonna walk you through the three stages, yes, there are three, of moving to cloud accounting. Ideally, your weapon of choice, your digital platform of choice is zero, but it applies in principle to other platforms as well. Now let's look at the three stages, and they are as follows. Stage one is about preparation. Here, you are going to be defining your requirements. Once you decided to make that move, you need to start thinking about what is it you want the system to actually do for you. Do you want it to track categories? So if you sell multiple products, you have a variety of projects, then decide what those categories should be that you want to keep an eye on, that you want to track. It could be a department, it could be a location, it could be a product, it could be a particular thing that you're working on, you make that pick. What about the reports? Talk to your stakeholders. What are the reports? What are the questions that you need help answers with? That's the reports you want to generate. Do you want your system to integrate with talking to other systems you have in your organization? Talking to websites, CRMs, there is an app for that and there are ways to join them up. Bank feeds, a real powerful thing within cloud accounting where the system can pull in data from your bank. Do you have a need to have any applications plugged in with it as well? If you manage inventory, there may be something you want to tap into. Make sure also that your team are aware from the outset what you're doing so they can help you with the implementation and help define the requirements from the system as well. Now, your team does need to be informed about these upcoming changes. They need to be prepared and they need to understand what's happened at the moment to make sure that the good things are reflected in the new system and the bad things are actually put to one side. Make sure you've understood the resources that you need, not just cash to actually do the implementation, but the time that you need to set aside as well. Now, choosing the right date is going to be really crucial. Typically, the migration date will happen either at the end of your financial year or the end of a VAT quarter if you're a business that is VAT registered. For a new startup business, by the way, that's probably less of a complication. And in our own practice, when we help clients migrate, we send them out a questionnaire which captures all these required information. Prepare your data. Now, get a checklist of the data that you need to enter and import and make sure you get rid of the information you don't need to take across. So typically, customer files is a good chance to review that customer listing and delete and archive the ones you don't need. Supplier information, likewise. What headings will you want for your new system? What chart of accounts will you need? How will you categorize the transactions? What about the bank information? Details of your bank accounts for helping set up those bank fees. The historical data. You have a choice about how much data you want to transfer to the new system. So when we migrate clients to the cloud, when we migrate them to zero, they have a choice of not transferring anything across or several years of data. The choice is yours. Get rid of those outdated contacts, those outdated supplier and customer details as well. Now that's the preparation phase dealt with. Stage two is the migration. Now you can, and I would recommend, you run parallel systems together. Having a big, this is the day we switch off one and go to the other can be quite risking and can be a bottom clenching moment. So it's not unusual to run two systems at the same time. That way you can familiarize yourself with a new system. You can get the training, you get the familiarity. You can verify the accuracy of the new system. Cross check, generate those reports. Are they as you want them to? And depending on how big your organization is, that task will be relatively light or be relatively involved. Utilize what tools, resources you have. 
talk to your providers, talk to your team, talk to your accountants, talk to us. What software tools are out there to help you as well? But make sure that when you do that migration process, that you've got a good support network helping you. Now, if you are a startup organization, the setup procedures, the training, the import, getting prepared is going to be much simple. There is no historic data to worry about. So that's going to be fine and that's going to be easier for you to manage. If you don't have any previous accounting systems or well, you might be using spreadsheets or you might be using bits of paper, job is great. There's less data to manipulate, less data to deal with as well. It's a quick up and ready and you're ready to go. Now what's stage three? So we've done the preparation, we've done the migration, and folks, as a heads up, by the way, please do check out the show notes, and there's a link to our guide on dealing with all aspects of digital accounting, how to go through the migration steps, the uh, going to a new system, and what you should do afterwards. Now, effectively, you are gonna be embracing digital accounting. You're gonna be embracing, ideally, a system line zero. You start with the bits that are much more important for your business, perhaps invoicing customers, getting those invoices out in time, setting up your credit control function, the reminder letters that you will need, automate as far as possible. So there are lots of procedures and processes that you might be doing currently that lend themselves to automation, lend themselves to rules that you can set up. There are additional features. Most of us, when we buy it and get into new software, there are elements that we never touch that could actually add a great deal of power and time saving to your business. Ongoing support and training. With many of our clients, they might come in, they've got their own team, we train their team up and off they go. There are some that may not be as large, may not have large finance departments or decide to go it by themselves and occasionally check in to make sure everything is going well. So make sure you've got some way of thinking about once I start, what's the support that I need to going forward. Now, like any new system that we adapt, like any new thing that we embrace, it's always going to be a learning curve at the beginning with making sure that we're comfortable with what we are dealing with. We may have a system that we've managed to make work for us that was perfectly fine and we're in a different arena now. So it does take time for us to adjust to a new way of working. Things are always going to evolve. One of the things about digital accounting is that updates will be made available. Check those reports, gather the feedback from your team, ask them what their experiences are, where the niggles are, the things that they're enjoying. Make the adjustments as you go through and don't hesitate to relook at your processes. So what do we conclude overall? Well, moving to cloud accounting with a system like Xero is a massive and a significant step towards modernizing your business. Now, I don't use that word lightly. Not only will we be able to take the heavy lifting out of data capture, bookkeeping if you prefer, but it's the information you can extract, the insights that you'll gain, and the power to look after your business on a more powerful footing. Now remember, the journey doesn't end after migration. There's gonna be a continual learning pattern, adaptation to new ways of working to help you get the most out of zero. Now as an accountant and a business advisor, I'm here to support you through each step of the transition. Please do access the guide that will give you some good insight. And with the right approach and the resources, you'll find that cloud accounting is not just a change in just software, but a strategic move that will give you great insight and will greatly impact your earlier incarnation. Now, if you're ready to make the move or you've got questions about the process, you know what to do. Don't hesitate, reach out, contact us, and we will do what we can to help. Explore our library of videos and resources, and good luck with your cloud journey.